Last week marked the drippy season for us mechanics up here in the north. Nothing but soggy boots and salty lakes on our floors till springtime. Looking at my schedule, I had a string of Ford 3.5s to work on. Starting with an F-150 pickup for a broken exhaust manifold bolt and vacuum pump replacement. Lucky for me, the broken exhaust manifold bolt just so happened to be on the same side as the vacuum pump. So started with getting the turbo out of the way to gain access to the broken exhaust manifold stud. After finishing removing the manifold and making sure there was no cracks, it was time to go ahead and clean the mating surface and get ready to attempt to weld a nut to the stud and get it extracted from the head. I prefer to do this over using an extractor tool or drilling anytime. And if you're lucky enough, nine times out of 10, it'll come right out. Once we got the broken exhaust manifold stud out, it was time to deal with these crusty coolant and oil feed lines for the turbo. Once I got the coolant feed line off, I went ahead and took the three 8 mil bolts out for the vacuum pump and began the process of fighting with this thing to get it out. Not only does it have a gear keyway on the end of it, but it also has a little doohickey that stinks out of the end and actually rides inside of the camshaft. It also has an o-ring around the outside of it and a screen at the very tip. So you got to do your best to not break that off. Finesse and caress, it's the name of the game. And there you can see the stupid little dangus holding us up. Once we got that out, I went ahead and finished removing the coolant feed line. And then it was time to open up the box, get our new vacuum pump gear clocked around the same position as the one that we took out. Not forgetting to transfer the one 8 mil bolt that does not come out with it in the vehicle. It hits the firewall, so that has to stay in the vacuum pump for reinstallation. So we got the vacuum pump reinstalled. Went ahead and replaced our oil feed line and got our new exhaust manifold studs, gasket, and got the exhaust manifold bolted back on. With the turbo and the new coolant feed line installed, it was time to go ahead finish putting the charge pipes on and fire it up and check for leaks. They didn't make it very far off the hoist before the check engine light popped on. After looking over the scanner, we had a O2 voltage cold for bank one and sensor one. That was the side we were just on, so while I was down there looking to make sure I didn't leave anything unplugged, I noticed the coolant track coming down the side of the bell housing. Unfortunately, the coolant fitting for the coolant feed line, the O-ring on the inside, wasn't doing an O-ring thing anymore. So we got a replacement, which was the wrong fitting, but luckily the internal O-ring was the same as the fitting that I took out. So after replacing the O2 sensor, fixing the coolant leak, we were finally able to get this thing out and take it for a proper test drive. No check engine light came back on, no coolant leaks, no oil leaks, no exhaust tick. This one was finito. Our next victim was a 2013 Ford Explorer Sport with crank camshaft correlation codes and a leaking water pump. So I went ahead and got that pulled in and we called her a night for Wednesday. Thursday morning, we were met with more snow. So I wasted zero time in getting started on this project. Once the wiper cowl and strut tower brace is removed, we can move on to removing the charge pipes, intake manifold, wiring harness, and coil packs. I then removed the alternator belt, belt tensioner, and crankshaft pulley, and move on to supporting the engine with a jack stand, so that way I can remove the front engine mount. Once that is done, I will go on to removing both the valve covers and the timing cover 
to gain access to both the timing chain and water pump. The cover is removed, we can visually inspect for damage and get it rotated over to top dead center to install our cam lock tools so we can remove the timing chains. To get the crankshaft positioned to where it needs to be for top dead center, I go to install the cam lock tools and bank one does not want to lock. After rotating the crank to get the cam tool in, you can see we do in fact have play in between bank one and bank two. This does coincide with our current camshaft correlation codes, so we're on the right track. Then it's time to remove the VVT solenoids as we, are, we will also be replacing those as well as the VVT gears themselves. With the timing components removed, I can proceed to removing the rest of the timing chain guides as well as our leaking water pump. When the water pumps leak on these, it makes it look like the AC compressor is leaking. Fun fact. Once all the mating surfaces are clean of debris and ready for reassembly, go ahead and get our new water pump slapped back in the hole. Put a little bit of Loctite on all of our water pump bolts just for some extra insurance. Go ahead and get them torqued into place. Once those are dealt with, we can move on to our secondary timing chain tensioners and guide. As well as replacing our VVT gears themselves. The timing marks on the gear, timing gears are actually on the back of the gear. So you need to match up the links before installing them onto the cams, which makes it a little bit difficult. After getting the cam bolts torqued, I remembered that this here timing chain guide needs to go in before the cam gear. So don't be like me. Make sure you put this guide and that 8mm bolt in before the cam gear. Once I got it reinstalled, went ahead and pulled the grenade pins on our secondary timing chain tensioners and moved on to our primary chain, ensuring our cam gear marks are aligned as well as our crank mark is aligned with the colored links. All of our marks lined up, time to go ahead and pull the pin on the tensioner and we can move on to our VVT solenoid manifolds as well as replacing the VVT solenoids themselves, which would round out our Thursday workday. Friday morning, I was struggling to find motivation, found it in the form of two cans of Red Bull, and the fact that I knew I was going to get my kids after work. The only thing that stood in the way of that was wrapping up this 3-5 water pump and timing chain job. The snow continued to come down, and I had run out of propane when I woke up in the morning for heat. For those of you that don't know, I'm not only a mechanic, I'm also a living a gypsy nomad life at the moment, and living in this camper. So I ran home at lunch to ensure that I did in fact still have heat. Luckily, the furnace was running, and it was still balmy 64 degrees. Fortunately, I woke someone up from their nap. She was not impressed. Knowing the heat was running, I figured I'd do a quick perimeter check, make sure all the foam board skirting's still there. Portable poop tank is still frozen to the ground, so that's good. And it was time to make our way back to the shop. Only good thing about all this snow on the ground is a little bit of drift in action. Only bad part about a little bit of drift in action is when you forget you have cargo. <laughs> Friday afternoon, I really got after reassembly and didn't manage to get a lot of filming. I was just hoping 
I could manage to get rid of the string of three, five repairs and maybe move on to something different. Something other than a four, three, five timing chain or water pump job. Yeah, well, I'll change of pace. Nope. Well, I mean, it's kind of a change. This one's naturally aspirated, no turbos. But still, you're for water pump and timing chain. Oh, well. It's whatever. This one gets to wait until Monday. Now, it's time to enjoy the weekend and spend some time with the family.